Well, hello, friends. Uh, we're back with a, another exploration of the Excel Data Connector, and the things that we can do uh, connecting our Excel to F and O using the, the O Data Connector. So in our last video, we were looking at ways that we could bring formulas into our uh, report, right? So you remember that, that if in our designer, we, we added some columns, some calculated columns, you can see they are formulas because they have this sigma for formula and that's the formula. Uh, this one here for concurrent projects is doing a count of where the start dates are the same. This one here is a, is a lookup from what's happening in this table compared to right, what's happening in this table. So formulas work as long as what we're trying to report on has the same structure as uh, what we what our report contains, right? Every, every row that I have here has one answer for, uh, for each of these columns and so we have, we have basically a one-to-one -one relationship between you know and what we're we're trying to accomplish here now there are other ways that we could do this and sort of the, the way that we go about things changes if we're trying to, to sort of report in ways that are going to change the structure of our data uh, for instance you can perhaps imagine wanting to do a pivot table so i have projects here maybe I want to do a, a pivot table of my projects to, to look at what my project groups are. So we can, we can do that within, you know, our normal Excel based rules, right? I can do alt N V, right? That goes to insert, uh, inserts the pivot table from a, from a range. So alt N V is my shortcut, alt N V hit enter. And it says, hey, do you want to make a pivot table from, uh, from this list? We can say, okay, creates a new pivot table. Let's say we want by, by project and by project ID with some, uh, we'll roll it all up. Subtotal project ID. Let's collapse everything for now. I'll collapse all, that's what we want. Collapse entire field. Uh, no totals because we haven't chosen something to total on, but let's just do a count of the things. Ta-da, we have a, a pivot table that, that totals things by the, the project group. And this is nice. We'll, we'll call this our pivot. Name this as pivot. Uh, so in essence, we can, we can keep these aligned when I refresh my report and then refresh my uh, my pivot, I'm going to get the the updated data. So if I come back to our our list of projects, let's say I go about and I want to change a project group. So I'll go to the project tab and where is this guy? In maintain the project group. Let's change this from TNM no width to change it to, uh, I'll call it TNM whip. So we've made that change. And if we go to our report, we'll see that right now we have 56 TNM no whips and five TNM whips. If we refresh our report, you'll see that our, our totals here are still 56 and, and five, because we also have to refresh our pivot, which we can do, where's the good refresh button? You can always right click and hit refresh. That's one way to do it. You can see that our numbers have adjusted. In the data tab, there is also the refresh all button. That's what I was looking for. So that's a uh, just sort of a, another way that we can generate a, a different shaped report. I don't know the fancy reporting words, but that's that's a way that so we can build pivot tables off of our base data, and then when we refresh our base data and refresh our pivot tables, we get uh, we 
get new new updated information. I think that's pretty cool. So uh, an additional thing that we can do, and what I want to look at in this video, is how we can use Power Query, right? Power Query is another sort of data analysis tool, and, and we could use Power Query to tie together data that we get through our reports as well, right? If you think of, of a pivot as sort of a report on the table-based data that you have, Power Query is also a report on whatever data you provide to it. You can provide data in, um, it can be data inside your Excel table. It can be data to related to other, other queries, data from the web. Um, in this example, I, I just like to compare, uh, we'll look at, at bringing in data between both the, the project table. So we'll, we'll use our data connector to, we have this project data. Uh, we'll bring in data from the project contract table, and then we'll, we'll look at how we, we join that data together. It's basically, we can make a fancy V, it's basically a VLOOKUP if you think about it. Functionally, it's the same as a VLOOKUP, but when we tie things together through Power Query, sometimes it can be a bit easier to, to see what we've done and, uh, We'll just look at that experience. So for today's video, uh, you know, the, the question, a question one might have is what is the, what is the currency? What is the sales currency of my projects? And if you look on a given project, you, and you've, uh, perhaps you already have, right? There isn't actually a sales currency on the uh, project record itself. All happens at the project contract level and so though i'm i'm on a project uh the project doesn't have a sales currency it's that that data point is stored in the project contract that the that is associated with the project so if we look at our our flat data right we have a project contract id right we we know the project contract id that's related to our project um but we want so for for all intents and purposes here i'd like to bring in the project contract data so that i can understand the sales currency related to this project contract and then provide a report of say project id and project name by uh project con or by sorry provide project id and project name by sales currency that's sort of what we'd like to look at so how do we go about doing that so in a, I'll make a, a new sheet. And like we've seen in our other video, I'm gonna use the designer to bring in the project contract data to this field, to this table, this Excel experience as well, project contract. You just start typing project space contract and the filtering kind of helps me choose the, the data that I would like. Click next. We'll bring in company ID. Oh, we'll bring in data area ID. How about project ID? sales currency. That's really what we care about for here. Obviously, there's more data on the project contract table. Say done. Yes. Done. Refresh. So when I refresh, it's refreshing both data entities. Now I have the, the data in my, uh, let's see. And actually, because these projects are bound right to the USSI company, let's only take the contracts related to the USSI company as well, just to make things easier. So we'll say company equals USSI. Done. Let's refresh that. So now we just have the USSI project contracts. Let's label this, rename project contracts. Slide this over here, right? So we have our projects and our project contracts. And I'd like a report of all of my project IDs and project names with the related uh, sales currency. So I can do that. Uh, this is in the table design. Let's, let's rename these tables to make things a little bit easier. We'll call this one project contract. Project contract. Sure. And we'll call this table 
instead of X table one, we will label it uh, project. And now I want to bring both of these into Power Query. The way that we bring them into Power Query is I say get table data from this table. And thanks, and thanks. And when I do that, it opens up this Power Query editor over here. Um, so right now we're just bringing in the data. So I'm going to close and load to, and I say, let's just create the connection for now. That's all I want to do. Okay. So we have connected Power Query to this project's table. And then I'd like to do the same thing with this project contracts data. Bring that in. Close and load to, we'll say only create a connection for now. So now we can, we can have fun. We have connections to both this projects table and this project contracts table. And a reminder of what we're trying to do is we're trying to stitch these things together so that we can see the sales currency related to our project ID. Uh, so let me edit this. Um, and let's, let's use projects as our base. So I'm going to duplicate projects. We will call this projects with currency. And now what we want to do to stitch these things together is we want to merge these queries uh, so we can merge. And this is kind of like doing a VLOOKUP. Um, so I want to merge this data with my project contract data and I want to match it on this project contract ID field, right? So this left outer means we're going to take all of our project data and then we're going to match it with the, the project contract data table um sort of on the other side so it looks like we've got matches for almost everything right probably what we'd expect there's some internal projects that don't have any uh any project contracts so that makes sense to us and then we can uh, choose which fields we want to bring in so we'll just say bring in only sales currency and then that's all we care about. So we're going to, uh, I wrote a held down shift to select all of this. And I want to remove these columns. So what I have through Power Query is I've, I've created this report that joins project contracts table to the projects table. And then I've, I've used some, um, removed the unnecessary column. So all I have is project ID and the sales currency that I'm looking for. And what I, what I like about uh, Power Query here is you can, right, it has the steps of what we've applied to, to get here, right? So we started with our duplicated source. We then merged in the uh, project contract table Right, we, we brought in that sales currency table value and then we removed the rows that we didn't want. Um, and now we can choose to close and load this to a new uh, table. And we, yeah, so we'll do that. And so here's, here's what you have is we have projects data here, right? And this is our projects contract data, then power through Power Query, sort of this report that we've generated on the fly through Power Query, you have a list of all the, the sales currency. And let's see, it's all, well, not a very interesting report. All sales currency is in uh, US dollars. So not not so interesting, but the, the idea that this is something that we can do is, uh, 
perhaps more more useful than than what we've actually done to, to join these things together. Um, now, if I were to change something, so let's go into here. And let's say I were, you know, the sales currency were to get edited. Then if we come over here and we were to, so you, you can see I, I have two different add-ins basically that are working together. We have the dynamics add-in that we were working with, also the power query connector. So within the dynamics add-in, if we were to refresh our data, we would get that new uh, sales price change. And you can see it right here. Right now there is a, a EU sales currency record. Now, this table hasn't changed yet because we haven't refreshed our data. But if we come to our data, and refresh all, which will refresh our pivot table and our, our Power Query connection, we should now have the, the, EU, um, right, the EU value is being reported here. So you can see how that, that flows through. Um, so anyways, this is just a, a, a simple example um, of, of how you can use Power Query to, to build a report off of data that you've brought in through the Excel data connector, right? So I'm using my connection to, to bring in the Excel data. And then in the same way that I would, I can build a pivot off that, that, that data, I can also bring that data into Power Query and do any one of a, a a number of different functions that I might do within Power Query. And so sometimes it's, it's easy to build a formula within, uh, within what you're, you're trying to accomplish. And you can, you can do that with the add-in. If you have something more complicated that you're trying to do, you can, uh, you can use Power Query and that, that can be a friend to build sort of the, the a, a different version of the, the data, a different structure of the data. Um, as, as suits your needs. So that's, that's the quick lesson today. Uh, it's just kind of thinking more broadly about how we can use these tools or how we can compound value by bringing things together, right? So we have Dynamics 365, which is obviously your data source. We can use the, the Excel connector to connect to that data. And then we can use Power Query to build more more diverse, more differently structured reports out of that, uh, that data that's getting pulled, pulled into Excel. All right, well, that's today's lesson. Um, you know, let me know in the comments if you, you have any questions or, or other ideas around that. Love to talk to you. I'll see you.